So this is his most dangerous unit, the Phoenix. 6 defense and 10 resistance. That's a lot of resistance. Wow. They all have a lot of resistance. That's going to be a bit problematic. Uh, that's the hero. Magic bolts, quick stab. We do have spawn kin, which is plus 20% damage. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So with rallying blessing, all friendly units in the one hex radius would gain rally, bolstered defense and bolstered resistance. Wait, it doesn't say for how many turns. For the end of the fight? Or for one turn, it does not say. Yeah, the spear guy is going to need a heal, that's for sure. Let's give him that heal right away. And probably another one. That's better. Yeah, so I need to test how that buff works. This is our other hero, so he has magic blast. Lightning Evocation, he has a Restore, for tile range, and Warding Bond. Damage sustained by the target-friendly unit is transferred to this unit with a 20% reduction. Interesting. Okay, let's just use a Restore here. That also gives us regeneration. Right, that's my main guy. Yeah, so this can be used with up to 4 tile range. And it will affect up to seven units. Yeah, I assume this is for one turn. It can't be until the end of this fight. That would be way too strong. So let's just pop channel power right now. Man, I almost tempted to just let this spellbreaker die to get rid of that glitch, but it is a tier three unit, so <laughs> it would be best to not have him die. I do have a few units that can be considered throwaway, however. So I can send them first. Anything that's tier 1 and the soldier rank is pretty much throwaway potentially. They don't even have experience. So it's a unit I can replace super easily. Okay, that's it. Here they come. So how about we try to freeze some of them? I can move and then use it. Uh, oh yeah, right, this is like melee range. Lightning Evocation is seven tiles, however, I can use that. And it always hits, too. Normally it's six range, but I picked up a hero skill that increases my range by one, so now it's seven. It won't be a ton of damage, because they all have a lot of resistance. Okay. Well, we did land the standard resistance, so that's fine. They do have a lot of melee units in here, so it might be best to let them come to us. We can stand on top of these forest tiles to get obscured. And we should use defense mode warding, actually. And that's plus two defense to all adjacent hexes. We can still cast something. Probably chain lightning. Well, I don't want to spend too many points. Let's actually just buff ourselves. They have a lot of resistance, so I think self-buffs will be more useful right now. There you go. The goal is to lose as few units as possible. With auto-resolve, we lost five. Okay, well, here comes the big boy, the Phoenix. That's the most dangerous unit they have. The only tier 4 they have. Okay, somebody will probably die. These tier 1 soldiers will probably die. Some of you will die, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Okay, well, nobody died yet. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. That's a huge retaliation, too. So, eh, not a fun. Well, I can flank the arcane guard. And this is too good of an opportunity to get the flanking attack twice. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the thing with Frost Evocation is that 
it will also hit friendly units, which obviously I don't want to. But we can attack three times with magic balls. Oh, it has fiery rebirth. One turn after this unit dies, it comes back to life with 40% of total health and deals 15 fire damage to other chainsaid units. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It is a friggin' phoenix, but that's kind of dirty. Yeah, this is going to be rough. Some units will definitely die here. I was hoping for a kill there, but all right. Oh yeah, that's the glitch attack. What's this? Uh, arcane guard. Here it comes. <laughs> the psychedelic attack. Right, the damage sustained by the target friendly unit is transferred to this unit with 20% reduction. I guess I could use warding bond on this almost dead arcane guard. Not a bad idea. With that said, I can also use lightning evocation here. Okay, let's actually use Warding Bond. Like so, and then we can still use Magic Blast. Okay. Now he can attack. Yeah, this Phoenix worries me a little bit. Right, Sweating Breeze is on cooldown for one more turn. Killing that phoenix will take a while. Do we charge the scout? Probably, yep. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's a lot of retaliation. I don't even want to attack with the storm spirit. <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. On the other hand, it will remove the retaliation attack, and we do have life still active right now. I'm going to assume the storm spirit will probably get killed. I was hoping to get enough experience on it to evolve it, but that would require champion, which probably isn't going to happen. Not quickly, anyway. Okay, spell shield. This will be a flanking attack. Okay, descent. Right, I have to move out of his range first. I will take an attack if I do that. But I kind of have to. I think I'll just pass the turn on the Storm Spirit. Use defense mode. Alright, let's see. Yeah, this guy will definitely die, that's fine. That's a bit close on the hero. Okay, now the hero went down. Uh, that was the secondary hero, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, this phoenix is a major problem. And then I have to kill it basically for the second time afterwards. It has way too much resistance, that's the problem. I'm having a hard time burning through all that. If I can take it out, the rest will be pretty easy though. Okay, good damage. And then we have the second hero as well with the bow. A uh, third second hero. And now you can bring them back, that's fine. Okay, got it. Decent damage. Well, the arcane guard will definitely die. Before he does, though, we can do a flanking attack. That works. So Star Purge does double damage on Magic Origin units. I assume this is a Magic Origin unit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is, but let's double check. Is it not? No, it's actually not. It's just an animal. Okay, 
All right, all right. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I guess we'll just go with the glitch attack. Okay, so how does that rebirth work again? I think what we need to do is kill it and then move away. One turn after this unit dies, it comes back to life with 40% hit points and deals 15 fire damage to adjacent units. So what I actually need to do is kill it with like the first action and then move away. Because I can kill it right now, but all three adjacent units will take 15 damage. Which, you know, might not be what I want. I can move away with the Storm Spirit. I do have some ranged options still. Not a lot of them, though. Yeah, I think we should move out here. Let me charge the Archer. Okay, good. There's a chance I can kill it. I'm giving up a heal if I do that. How much health does it have left? Five. Yeah, this should kill it. I think it's worth doing, because if I leave it alive, it will do damage to me anyway. And it can do a lot of damage. So, frankly, let's just kill it. Okay. So now two of my units will take 15 damage, which is fine. It would have been worse if I left it alive. Okay, that'll do. Let's see what's going to happen now. So, there it is. Okay. Fortunately, it only revives with 40% health. And once per battle, yeah. Okay, this is still a better outcome uh, than auto-resolve. So far. I don't think auto-resolve played around the rebirth. I didn't watch all of it because of the glitch. But yeah, I don't think it took it into account. On auto-combat. Okay. Let's go with the chain lightning. That's good damage. Now we can charge from behind. Got it, nice. Giant Slayer definitely helps on these guys. So it might be a tier 1 unit, uh, but yeah, they get more damage against large targets. Now we still have two heroes to deal with. This one's almost dead. That will do it. Nice. Okay, got him. Uh, that's a scout, so not a big deal. Can flank the hero. Okay, good. He's also cavalry, so... Let's pop that heal. No marbs. 75% from back here. Yeah, that's not bad. 75% three times, I'll take it. Or I can do 95 twice. We could also use a lightning evocation. Eh, that's not really better. Can I freeze them? Okay, hold on. We can try to freeze them. I don't know how well that's going to work out. Here. This way I will not hit any friendly units. Okay, there we go, it worked. Frozen. Two of them are frozen. Nice. Very nice. That was the right move. And we can kill the guy who's not frozen. Even better. Even better. Let's hit the hero while he's frozen. Okay. Last move. Glitch attack incoming. You ready? <laughs> Cover your eyes. Okay, looking good. That was a good turn. So definitely a way better outcome than auto-resolve. If I replayed it again, I could probably keep the hero alive, but it's fine. We're still not done. <laughs> but yeah, he's pretty much screwed here. Yep, this will kill him. Nice. We get more morale. Alright. Come on, guys. Finish the job. Oh, 
Got him. Okay, just two units left now. Not a problem. No, I don't want to. Yeah, actually, we're done. They're fleeing the field. Uh, yep, that's fine. Okay, so only two units died. Wait, uh, more than two. Uh, right, the warrior died, the arcane guard died, arcanist and the spell shield. I think that's acceptable. I can try to do it better, but I think that's acceptable. We'll keep this outcome, that's fine. We killed the phoenix, that's the important part. That was the toughest unit they had in any of these armies. Ooh, okay, this looks promising. You gain a unicorn unit. We have unicorns at home. A charge strike face, okay. You gain a thunderbird unit. A thunderclap. Units in one hex radius are displaced by one hex. Have their defense mode removed. Damages obstacles. This looks promising. Six style range uses all of your action points. And the spirit wolf. Tier 3 ethereal unit. I think I'll take the thunderbird. Heck yeah. Let's take the thunderbird. Nice. All right. It's low maintenance as well, minus 25% upkeep. 15 gold upkeep. That's actually quite a lot for a single unit. We can grab a Brewer Ogre. Uh, that's the one with the freezing attack. So let's do that. Uh, right, and I actually don't have my wizard tower built up, so I will have to recruit another hero, because I never really built up my wizard tower. This is what you need to resurrect heroes, crypts, and I actually don't have that. And now let's reshuffle this army a little bit. He still has units down here, but the thing is, I had an advantage because he would have attacked us with everything. Since half of his army was out of range, we only got to fight half of it, basically. Is this fine? So that gives us battle mage. Yeah, the problem with this stack is that he will it will have no melee. The problem with this whole army right now is that I don't have melee, but they are down to very little health. I think it's best if we back up. It's just that I can't really back up much with my main stack. I do have some melee units coming from the north here. We got haste berries. Founding, migrating and absorbing cities takes minus two turns, okay. And another tranquility pool, all right. And we leveled up. Makes tactical spells deal plus 20% damage. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, I want that. Heck yeah, I want that. There you go. Cell remains. Yep. Get some gold. Okay, 400 gold. Now we can hire a hero. While army leader, all units in the army gain plus 6 sensing range. Okay. Astral affinity, chaos affinity. This unit deals plus 20% damage against tier 1 units. While army leader units in the army have universal camouflage. Gain plus 10 combat casting points when a hostile combat spell is cast. Okay, that's interesting. Attacks have a 90% chance of inflicting distracted. All attacks targeting this unit are flanking attacks. Now that actually sounds pretty good. That actually sounds pretty good. And then I could give him uh, the sword. King's Bane or whatever it's called. He's also cheaper, or she, whatever. Okay, I kind of like this ability. Having all attacks count as flanking attacks is pretty strong. Welcome aboard. So now we'll give you King's Bane instead. There you go. And I guess a horse, that's fine. And a shield. So this shield gives us terrifying aura. At the end of the turn, adjacent enemy units lose five morale. I've had it for a while, I just don't have heroes that use shields. Now I do. You can join the Thunderbird. And you will be the governor. There you go. So the capital is over here, presumably. I could take out some of this other stuff in the area. Might not be a bad idea. This one doesn't seem to be guarded. He moved away with his main hero. Maybe a good idea to attack here. I kind of wanted to wait for reinforcements. Okay, I don't need at least one melee unit in my main stack. It just means I need to move something out of it. Here. Let's attack this city. Probably raise it. 
I might free out of free cities, either raise it or vassalize it. We'll see when we capture it. Now, again, I could also convert my outpost into a city. Well, first, let's claim the Tower of Destinies. If I do that, I'll have to spend the Imperium to increase my city cap. So I'm fine with this staying as an outpost for now. We can build some walls. The important part is that we got the Tower of Destinies now. So once I wait a little bit, I will get this Bond Dragon available for recruitment. It's a tier 4 unit. Gold has been a constant problem lately. So let's work on the gold. Right, let's work on the Wizard Tower. I've been slacking with that a little bit. But I will claim a province first. There aren't any resources I can claim anymore. We have one quarry, two foresters. Okay, let's claim a forester then. Alright, wizard tower it is then. A new empire development skill. Oh yeah, uh, I was going to pick up a right of astral summons. Which will immediately summon an army of magic origin yogis in our throne city. It's a little bit pricey, but yeah, it will give us an extra army right away. Let's grab that then. Oh wow, holy crap. We got a tier 4 mythic unit, wow. Okay. <laughs> a crappy skeleton. So Lightbringer is a decent unit because it has Convert, which is a chance to mind control the target. Flow Serpent. When this unit is hit, it becomes invulnerable and stunned, okay. That's interesting. So what's uh, this Mage Bane thing? This looks pretty badass. Devour Mind. Target enemy unit has a 100% base chance of becoming inflicted with insanity, which is the unit becomes uncontrollable and will attack random units within a certain range. If successful, the attacker gains plus 10 maximum hit points and the plus 2 resistance until the end of battle. If unsuccessful, the target sustains 8 lightning damage, 8 fire damage and 8 frost damage, okay? Devourer of spells. While this unit is in battle, spells cannot be cast by the enemy. Holy crap, that's insane. So it blocks out all spells by the enemy? What? That's kind of nuts. That's kind of nuts. Oh, it would suck fighting against these guys, especially as mana addicts. This is like almost a hard counter to mana addicts, straight up. Holy crap. Yeah, that's kind of insane. Right, and it's an ethereal unit, so it can pass through obstacles. It's also immune to bleeding, burning, disease, freeze, immobilize, poison, and uh, wet. Minus 15, uh, minus 50 percent more are lost from all sources. Can other out low maintenance. Yeah, this devourer of spells thing is actually kind of insane. That's kind of insane. Base upkeep, free Imperium and 22 mana. Okay, Imperium upkeep for a single unit is pretty rough, but this is a really powerful unit. Wow. And we got this again from Rite of Astral Summons. That is kind of nuts, the fact you can get tier 4 mythic units from this. I assume it's semi-random. I'm pretty sure, okay, I remember using this once before, I think. And it, it was totally different units than this, so it is definitely semi-random. I don't remember getting a tier 4 unit from this last time, so I think we got lucky with this guy. That is super powerful. Okay, we got the amplification pylon now. So that summons a tower, which will do damage, and it will also give us plus 20% spell damage, while it's not dead. We got one more research cycle. So Amplify Minds will give us knowledge in the target-friendly city. Not sure if I care about that that much. I might actually reroll this. Shuffle, I mean. Well, okay, hold on. Having Rock Blast might actually not be a bad idea, because there are sometimes units that have very high resistance but low defense, and I don't have a single spell that does physical damage. I only have spells that check against resistance, not against defense. It might be useful to have Rock Blast to use against units that have low defense but high resistance. Okay, I'm actually going to grab Rock Blast. We got Astral Blood, uh, just finished casting it. That will give us Achievement Fortune which is plus 10% critical hit. For all mole people. There we go, done. Okay, there's his stack. One thing I can do is cast Lightning Torrent. 
I will have to wait one turn to finish casting it, so his army needs to be in my actual like vision range. Now, do I want to wait for the big floaty eye to arrive here? And that will take a while before it gets there, so probably not. Let's merge all of these. So that's the stack for this guy, at least for now. And that's actually a semi-decent stack, I guess. It could have been better. It'll do for now. He's not meant to fight on his own, but rather combined with our other armies. Oh, this is not guarded at all. Right, it doesn't have any walls or stuff like that. So, okay, we can raise it, but that will take four turns. Or we can vassalize it. I'm leaning towards just vassalizing it. I don't want to absorb it, because I will have to increase my city cap. I don't want to do that. Let's just vassalize it, because it will be much faster. And I guess I can give these guys Whispering Stone. Might as well. We can also trade. I can get the draft for gold, and I can get the gold for mana. Pay 19 mana, receive 12 gold. That's not the best trade I've ever seen in my life, to be honest. Oh yeah, and then there's the Brewer Ogre. I really like this guy. Again, mostly for the freeze. The downside is that... Actually, there isn't really a downside. There's a free turn cooldown on drink. Well, the downside is that you strengthen yourself, but you lose some defense. But freeze is really powerful. 90% freeze in a cone for a tier 2 unit is pretty good. Will he move? Uh, no, he will not. Okay. So we can hit the stack. Right now. There you go. It did some damage. And it also had a debuff, right? Yes, yeah, suffer minus two lightning resistance for one turn. And we do have a lot of lightning attacks. Now, I'm not necessarily going to attack it right now, though. But maybe it will discourage it from attacking me. I'm not going to wait for this other stack to arrive. It's not even remotely close right now. His army is not that strong. It's mostly the hero who's level 8. He has Draining Blade, 38 damage, deals damage to the target enemy, and heals you for the same amount as the damage dealt. He has Fire Breath. Yeah, this guy is pretty nasty, but that's his ruler. That's his main guy. So I suppose it's to be expected. We got Rock Blast, good. Now we can pick a new tome. Okay, so what do we want here? I have a ton of mana, so I think we should look for potentially the most powerful uh, summoned unit that we can find here. Or one that would complement my existing units. The Iron Golem is not bad against physical units, but it has very crap resistance. Adds Grasslands feature to target friendly province. Works on desolate terrain. Turns into fungus fields underground. Okay, it's a terraforming spell, straight up. Friendly units in a 2 hex radius gain free regeneration. Target flora obstacle transform into a flora stinger unit under your control. That seems pretty good. Summons a nymph. So, tier 3 support unit, seduce. Grants a base 60% chance of making target enemy unit become mind controlled for 3 turns. If unsuccessful, the unit is distracted instead. So, all attacks against this unit are flanking attacks. Revitalize. Friendly units in one hex radius gain two regeneration and have their status effects removed. I quite like this one, Tome of Fertility. 20 damage poison blast. I actually really like this one. I think I might grab this one. City structure, plus one food and plus one draft per population. Okay, let's go for Tome of Fertility. We'll also get bountiful fields. I also like this regeneration AoE. 2 hex radius, so that's huge. You could potentially, like, cast this on your entire army, straight up. That's 3 stacks of regeneration. So plus 6 is from 1 stack. With 3 stacks, you get 18. Alright, the Tom of Fertility it is then. Life, I would say. Right, so restore the land is boosted. I kind of want this nymph summon. The crags of the highest mountain. That would take three turns. Terraforming is nice, but I don't care as much about this right now, this moment. The nice thing about summon spells is that you can summon it anywhere. Like, basically anywhere on the world map. You can summon it right next to your army. So you can use this to reinforce your army pretty easily. 
You don't have to pay upkeep, so they are not free. Okay, let's research summon nymph. I don't really have good summons right now. I only have a low tier summons. We have the stone spirit, which is a tier one fighter unit, and the lesser storm spirit, which is a tier two, you know, tier one shock unit. So these guys are not really that useful for me anymore. Okay, we're not moving from here. You just chill until the next turn. Your alignment has changed from neutral to good. Effects plus 100 relation with free cities and rulers that have a neutral or better alignment. Random events that occur have a plus 10% chance to be positive. Okay. Works for me. Let's see if he's going to attack me here. Probably not. No. He's just staying. He's protecting his city. Well, alright. I guess it's time to siege this. The main guy is pretty strong, but his units are not really that strong. Alright. 812 mana. Uh, yeah, w I don't necessarily need mana, but thanks, I guess. Here, that will reduce his lightning resistance and do some damage. Yeah, honestly, this should be a pretty easy fight other than his main guy. His main guy is nasty. Oh, really? Okay, let's do it. So when you start a siege, uh, you can use siege projects which have various effects. You don't have to, and you don't have to wait a certain number of turns to breach the defenses. In this case, this city only has palisade walls which is 20 fortifications, health is not that much. So it won't take as long. If I add wizard bombardment, I will break them on the next turn, basically. Because normally, uh, we do 10 fortification damage, so if I do nothing, it will take me two turns to break the fortifications. If I add a project, it will take me one turn. So that's basically how it works. So wizard bombardment is 200 mana, we have a ton of mana, we might as well use it. And if I use Haras Defenders, the young is defending the city will take 20 physical damage at the start of combat. So we can do that as well. And we just need to wait until the next turn. So we shall do that. Let's keep moving here. I will leave some defenses back at home, <laughs> preferably. A new Empire development. So, tier 1 units cost less upkeep. I do have quite a few tier 1 units still. Yeah, let's reduce our tier 1 unit upkeep a bit. That's pretty cheap. That's like a turn and a half of my Imperium income. And now we can siege. So, he has his main hero stack. He has these guys. Yeah, that's a lot of units defending. I could, in theory, wait for my backup to arrive here. What's your total strength? 700, 327. Well, my army is stronger. If it wasn't, he would have attacked me while I'm sieging. Because you can do that. And we did some damage with that spell on the last turn. And well, he did heal up. But we'll do 20 damage at the start of combat. Hold on, we can cast the spell right now. So this will do some damage and reduce his lightning resistance. Alright, let's attack. Yeah, we will win this. Question is, will we win without any casualties or not? Well, let's find out. Let's check auto-resolve first. Okay, so with auto-resolve, I will lose three units. Spell shield... Arcane Guard, and another Arcane Guard. That's probably a decent outcome. Uh, let's actually watch the replay. It's going to have this stupid glitch again. Well, I guess it is what it is. Okay, let's watch the replay. That's a pretty big fight. I'll speed it up. So where's his main guy? Hold on. Uh, I think over here. 
Yeah, that's the guy right here, Yaka. On the right. Okay. Well, the AI is healing at the start, so that's good. Moving closer together for defensive purposes. Okay. A lot of misses. One down, thousands to go. It's mostly his hero who's dangerous. Yep, that's one of his attacks right there. That was a ton of damage. So this one uh, guy in the front is almost dead already on the right side. That's ours. Okay. And now it cannot. A temporary uh, what temporary HP means oh yep here's the glitch temporary HP just means that you lose it at the end of the fight so that there's no incentive to stall because if it wasn't temporary you would have an incentive to stall combat to heal your army for more before the fight is over so instead combat healing only recovers your health for the duration of the combat and you lose uh, that temporary HP at the end so that again there's no incentive to stall the fight just to be able to heal yourself for more because otherwise you could just keep one shitty enemy alive to heal yourself back to full which would be pretty boring because it would take multiple turns of doing literally nothing. Yeah, it's a very good design decision as far as I'm concerned. And it broke. Yep, okay, now it's fine. It's combat HP only. No, at the end of the whole battle. Again, the point is that you don't get to keep that health after the combat ends so that you don't get an incentive to stall the entire fight for like 10 minutes for the sole purpose of healing up your units make sense like you can do it in many games and in the games where you can keep all of that health and you do have an incentive to stall battles the difficulty is usually balanced around that fact so if you play such a game on high difficulty, the player is expected to do that. I think I will actually keep this outcome. That was a good fight right there. Okay, I will keep this outcome. So we'll probably vassalize this. Okay, let's vassalize it. That will take one turn. And then we can probably go for the capital, I think. My other army is almost here with the Mage Bane. A defensive Pact, sure. Uh, let's rename the city, sure. I don't know what the character limit is in here, by the way. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's really long. It's like 20, 30 characters. It's pretty long. Just for future reference, I guess. Okay, we should be like pretty close to done with this scenario, I think. We need to take their main city and that's going to be it, I think. And then we can check out the, the next realm after this. Annex a province, sure. Uh, we should probably grab at least one quarry. Okay, quarry it is then. All right, so let's go for the capital then. It is time. Reinforcements have arrived as well. All oh, right, I'm technically, uh, this is technically not my vassal yet. It will be on the next turn. So I'd have to trespass through their territory. 
Uh, that's the summon spell, nice. <clears throat> so next... Frenzing Focus, unit enchantment. Frenzy, which increases damage dealt when they attack. When this unit attacks, it gains a stack of strength and... Yeah, this is nice, I will take that. And it works on like battle mages and stuff. Oh yeah, let's grab uh, Crypts. With this you can resurrect your heroes. We definitely want that. I should have built that a while ago. Your throne city gains 15 knowledge for each magic material your empire has access to. Okay, that's going to be a lot of knowledge. I will actually grab that, even though it's expensive. That was a ton of knowledge right there. We went up from like 150 to 200. Because I have a lot of magic materials. I have six magic materials. Now it's a vassal, all right? Don't want to uh, like stay too far away from each other. So that if they attack me, all three stacks will participate in the battle. There's frenzying focus. Animate flora. Amplify minds. Sustained city spell. I might actually read all this. Or grab animate flora. So this replaces basically like trees and things like that with a unit for you. A tier 2 skirmisher unit. Yeah, let's grab that. That's only one turn. Let's keep moving. We're almost there. I could pillage this. Yeah, I suppose I can. Hurt his production a little bit. We can also summon the Nymph. So that's a pretty nice unit. It has this regeneration effect. So all friendly units in one hex radius. Not only is a regeneration, it also removes all negative status effects. And it has 60% chance to mind control the enemy. If mind control fails, the unit is distracted instead. Which means all attacks against this unit will be flanking attacks. I mean, it is a bit tier 3, so... Okay, let's grab one. Uh, one more research cycle. Okay, let's get that terraforming spell. And then we'll get to pick a tier 3 tome, actually. We are almost done, but we will uh, look for tier 3 tomes. Oh yeah, Mystic Spire. Uh, that will unlock Spellbreaker, which is a tier 3 uh, battle mage unit with Star Purge. Oh yeah, this is like the guy who's glitching out. Yep, yep. I don't necessarily want you, to be honest. Okay, there it is. Now we can look for tier 3 tomes. Uh, let's check the units first. So this is a combat summon spell, which summons a tier 2 support unit with Astral Blessing. Target friendly unit heals plus 25 temporary hit points and gains static charge for 2 turns, so more lightning damage. The Astral Serpent, tier 3 fighter unit. Unit teleports to target hex, dealing damage to adjacent units. Then it gains refuged which makes it stunned and invulnerable. That's interesting. That's actually kind of nice. It deals damage to all adjacent units. Target friendly magic origin unit gains 5 strengthened, 3 bolstered and 3 bolstered resistance. Wow. It's only magic origin units, but that's kind of nuts. That's kind of nuts. Target enemy magic origin unit has 90% chance of becoming mind controlled for 2 turns. If unsuccessful, deals 30 damage instead. Heals all friendly magic origin units with plus 20 temporary hit points. Yeah, I have a feeling Tom of Summoning focuses mostly on magic origin units. Seed of Astral. Astral research costs minus 20% knowledge. Oh yeah, right. So, okay, this is the magic victory uh, condition. When you unlock tier 3 and then tier 4 and then tier 5 tomes, uh, you will unlock a special province improvement, uh, like this Seed of Astral. And in order to win a magic victory, you have to build all three and then wait 15 turns. And there will be a cooldown. Uh, I mean, there will be a countdown that pops up. So you have to build Seed, Root and Heart and then wait 15 turns while you channel the spell. Yeah, during which hostile armies are spawned next to the improvements in an attempt to destroy them. So that's how magic victory works. Yeah, kind of like Space Victory. Space Victory without the space. Mass Recall makes target-friendly army teleport back to the nearest owned city, makes closest allied 
you need teleport to within 4 hexes of the target hex and heals this allied unit for plus 30 temporary hit points. That's pretty strong. The phase ability, which... Alright, this is the phase enchantment, right? For battle mages and support units. Summon a Chaos Eater. Consume Chaos. Targets all adjacent enemies. Removes all negative status effects. Deals 12 random elemental damage for each status effect removed. And lifesteal. Uh, that's interesting. War Breed. Tier 4 Shock Unit. 27 damage heavy charge strike. 43 damage cleave. Unleash the Warhounds. At the start of the battle, gain 6 Warhound units on the attacker's side at the until the end of battle. This is a siege project. That's a pretty strong siege project. Uh, these are tier 1, but 6 Warhounds. Great cannon fodder. Stone Spirit. Quake, so chance to immobilize. Transmuter, so battle mage unit, tier 4. Petrify. Enemy units in one hex radius have a base 90% chance of becoming stunned. 6 tile range. Transmuter resources. Target friendly city converts their mana income gaining gold production and food equal to 70% of the mana income. Okay, that sounds pretty nice. Target enemies in one hex radius gain free thunder defense and sustain 20 fire damage. You know what I could really use? I could use some spell uh, that with thunder resistance effect because that will help my entire army's damage. Spawns a totem of the wild which spawns a random tier 1 animal unit at the start of each of your turns, okay? Last five turns. I don't really have animals, so I'll pass on this. Druid of the Cycle, support unit, tier 4. Target friendly unit, if alive, heals for plus 50 temporary hit points. If dead, is brought back to life with 70% of its total hit points. This ability cannot be used until life from death triggers. When this unit kills another, its cooldowns are reset. Okay, interesting. Until the end of battle, whenever a friendly unit dies, all other friendly units within two hexes heal plus 12 temporary hit points. That's pretty good, too. Diffuse health. Target enemy unit sustains 30 blight damage. Friendly units in two hex range are healed for plus 15. Okay, some of these spells here in Tom of Cycles are really good. And this Druid of Cycle is pretty good. He needs to kill an enemy, but once he does kill an enemy, he can bring back your friendly dead unit back to life with Restart the Cycle. He also has Cycle's End, slight chance of instantly killing an injured target. This chance increases the lower the target's hit points are. If unsuccessful, the target gains free weekend. This is a really strong unit. It better be, it's a tier 4. I'm actually kind of leaning towards. Tom of Cycles, if I don't find anything better. Besieged city loses one population, right, that's a siege project. Closest owned city gains one. At the start of the battle, all enemy units have minus 10 morale. Tyrant Knight, tier 4 shock unit. With phase, okay, and demoralizing heavy charge. So 90% chance of inflicting minus 10 morale. Final ultimatum, inflicts base 90% chance of becoming permanently mind controlled. Oh yeah, uh, on a, a target enemy routing unit. Right. Mm, okay, that's a weird one. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Permanently mind controlled. That kind of implies that you take permanent control of that unit, and not just for the combat itself, but also once it ends? I don't know. It's not totally obvious from this description whether you actually get to keep that unit permanently also outside of the combat. Just permanently yoink the unit and add it to your army. And that's pretty strong, but you can only use it on a target that's routing. Yeah, needs some experimentation. But it sounds like you can actually yoink an enemy unit. Tom of Sanctuary adds 12 healing spires in combat during a siege. Salvation. Target friendly unit heals all of its hit points as temporary hit points. Dispels its negative effects and gains free bolstered resistance. Okay, so Keeper's Mark grants Faithful, reducing unit upkeep. When taking fatal damage for the first time, makes them unable to die or use offensive abilities for one turn. And it affects all melee units. Interesting. Gives the race 
Divine Protection, granting them plus three spirit resistance, plus three status resistance. Okay. Tome of the Cold Dark. Uh, summon Snow Spirit. 30% chance of inflicting Frozen. 90% chance of inflicting Frozen. If unsuccessful, inflict Slowed. Target friendly city uh, starts altering terrain to Arctic. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that. It's good if you have uh, Arctic, uh, whatever it's called. Because one of the race traits you can pick when you're building your faction uh, adaptation. So if you have an Arctic adaptation on your race, this is very nice because you can transform terrain to, you know, Arctic, which is better for you if you have Arctic adaptation, which obviously I do not. Okay, I think I'm actually going to grab a Tome of Cycles. I really like this one. Let's get Tome of Cycles. There is a cycle. To okay, Druid of the Cycle. We'll grab a Druid of the Cycle. Feeds upon its prey, gaining strength. I could also lock it and get the Diffuse Health first. So the nice thing about the Diffuse Health is that it's both a damaging spell and a healing spell at the same time. As long as you have a unit within two hexes of the target. So I lock the Druid of the Cycle so that it stays here and we'll get the Diffuse Health. Okay. Well, let's keep moving. Right, we can summon the nymph. So yeah, now I can summon it anywhere I want. Except inside, like, uh, areas that are not physically revealed. But I can cast it anywhere I want. I can literally just move forward. And can we initiate a siege right now? I have no movement left here. Oh, I'm pillaging the quarry. I don't really care that much about pillaging that shit. I want to keep moving. Can I start this siege? Yes, I can. Okay, let's do that. So, 55 fortification health, archer battlements, ballista towers, and palisade walls. We'll use wizard bombardment. We could get onagers. So that gives us two onagers at the start of the battle. That's a tier 3 siege unit with 15 damage catapult. That's probably the best. Half of the defender's tower units are destroyed at the start of combat. Uh, that's also not bad, because he will have four ballista towers. Uh, that's probably better, actually, tower bombardment. Let's go with that. Right, so now we can summon that nymph. So again, I can just do it here. And add it to my army instantly. There you go. That should be the last fight uh, over this realm, I think. I guess we'll find out. Okay, move closer. We got the ogre. Almost there. Okay, two more turns until breach. I assume he got his hero back by now, yep. So he does have the hero back. Another hero. And mostly low tier units. Yeah, we'll win this easily. No problem whatsoever. Uh, oh yeah, you can definitely go tall. Tall versus wide doesn't matter that much in this game. Uh, both are perfectly viable. Which I'm happy to see, as a tall enjoyer. Okay, one more turn. There's Diffuse Health. Now we can get the Druid. It will be a bit too late. <laughs> Pretty sure this will be an easy fight. Uh, yeah, I mean, he doesn't really have anything left other than his hero. Who's pretty strong, but he can't win on his own. We lost absolutely nothing whatsoever. Okay, uh, is that it? Okay, that's it. I assume that will unlock the next story realm. Uh, tall means you have a few but very big cities. You can even build your faction uh, to work better with tall empire. Or you can build it to work better with wide. But like I said, both approaches work. Oh yeah, there's a replay. Uh, yeah, play and zoom out. One of my favorite features from older Civ games. Uh, can you speed up? Uh, that's underground. 
So there are events on the left. You can see exactly what's happening. So that was 39 turns. Yeah, map painting. A time honored tradition. All right. By repelling the invasion of Yaka, the spark of divinity was ignited, and a new Godir ascended to the cosmic pantheon. Beyond the veil of mortality, the pantheon represented an entirely different world. For while the Godir could walk the realms as gods, they had to abide by rules when dealing with their own kin within the Astral Sea. In Magehaven, a world near the center of the Astral Sea, the Godir of the Pantheon had established their Forum of Council. It was a place... I have no idea how long this campaign thing is, by the way. Stripped of their... I basically haven't touched it. <laughs> Even, though Even though I played quite a lot. Could ...meet up in Magehaven. Here, the Godir constructed their world gates, through which they embarked on their journeys of exploration and expansion that defined the fourth Age of Wonders. Ah yes, because Age of Wonders 4. I see what you did there. All right. Oh yeah, so uh, once you beat a game with some faction, you have the option uh, to add it to a pantheon, uh, which basically means they can pop up uh, as your enemies, as like another uh, player within the game. And I think uh, the main hero can also pop up for recruitment. I usually say no because I don't want to play against like factions I build for myself. It's pretty awkward to play against marbs, so I don't actually want that. So we gained uh, three uh, Pantheon points. I only have one unlock left here that's not cosmetic, which is this one, Earthshaker Hammer. So that unlocks... Uh, these are weapons you can start with. Great Hammer with a charge strike and a quake base 30 percent chance of inflicting immobilized okay and everything else here is basically cosmetic so it uh, doesn't really matter that much like new logos some customization options <laughs> 